Hey there YouTubers, welcome back. This is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Today we had a follow-up question to our count ifs video series. So we're going to talk about count ifs, as you know, with dates. So how do you do that? How do you say, hey, I want to know exactly how many of these records are uh, apples and how many also not only apples but between February and March? Hmm, that's an interesting question. So we need to have a uh, a discussion about how to do that. So let's do it. I'm going to hit Alt F11. We're going to copy, uh, we're actually going to make a new user form by clicking this little down arrow, go to user form here. Here's the user form number four. I'm going to copy some of the features from user form number three because I think um, that they were just dandy. So control C, go back to user form number four, paste, make a little room for it. Let's see here. All right, so we're resizing some stuff. If you uh, if you want, check out the video previous to this about count if uh, and count ifs. Very good stuff. So here here's what we did earlier. Um, we were analyzing this sheet for let's. Well, I'll just show you how many of these items have um, greater than or equal to 90% water, as well as 20 of these K cals of energy. There's 20 items that meet both criteria. But if I go up a little bit, what if it's 93% or above water and still has 20 K cal energy? Only two items. So and that changes as you dy dynamically changes as you go up and down these. So that's what we did there. Now we're going to talk about this sheet here. We've got dates. We have a category called what? That is a list of a few different random items the dates and then the quantity received for those things um, not going into the sum of all those things in the inventory but okay so let's do it back to this this is user form number four I'm going to let's see here I'm gonna make this a little bit larger and we're going to move some things around a little bit first of all this is not going to be units of energy we have got the what and this will be a combo box that has all these items in it. Then we are going to have the start date and end date. So let's get rid of this. Uh, let me put that back. And between these dates. All right. So we need a starting date. Let's rename this one. Hit F4. We'll call this one TB start date st date and then we'll need an end date so control c control v we'll paste that this will be called tb end date now not only that let's scooch this over a little bit so we can have a little room to type in a date okay there we go all right so we have a uh, start date and we've got an ending date right here lowercase a lowercase a okay start date end date here we go st date st or end date uh, I'm not gonna worry about these clickers here yes. here's gonna be our results um, this needs to be a combo box I think we said so this is the what so let's make a new combo box and here it is make it about this big and we'll name it. We're going to call it combo CMB for combo box, and we'll call it CMB what? So we'll know exactly what we're talking about. This is the list of categories. Now, double click on the back of the user form so that we can go immediately to the. We don't want the user form click. We want the user form initialized. That's over here on the right. Initialized. That's when the user form starts up. Obviously, user form initialized. Here we go. So let's name the range of the items. Let's just call this. Uh, what list the items alright now so a couple ways you could do this you could do for each item in in what list and then add items to the combo box or if you want to cheat then you can do this click here and we'll go down to uh, the uh, is it row source or list fill range I always get these two mixed up. Row source is going to be called 
what list remember that's what we just named that so as you can see even in my demo here you can see that those are selectable so that's fixed up the only, the only thing about that is you can't customize it you can't omit or include extra items other than what is in the named range so there's my caveat okay so we're ready to go um, as soon as we get this all straightened up let's copy and paste one line of code here the change event on each of these what we did in the user form 3 whenever this is changed or whenever this box is changed they both had a change event you see and so we're going to copy and paste that change event and then I will basically tweak it after we got it figured out so this whenever this changes we'll need to recalculate it whenever this changes or this changes so all three will have a change event go to the start date first for some reason and let's just uh, let's get this thing going here so yes the label is called lbl count if so that don't have to change that me dot lbl count if is going to equal whatever our formula does so it's equals to application dot worksheet function dot count ifs with an s because we have multiple criteria and the first criteria range is not going to be on the sheet called count it's going to be on the new sheet that's called uh, count ifs with date that's the sheet name <clears throat> So this workbook that sheets count if with date dot range, not the range called percent water. We need to make a range really. Um, so <clears throat> the first part it doesn't matter if you do the dates or if you do the category. Let's just name these ranges here. You can make this a dynamic range that way it grows or shrinks depending on how many records you have. I'm going to cheat because I don't want to waste all everybody's time. But we have over 1,287. We have 1,287 rows. Um, so we're going to say what range and we'll call this the date range control shift down and we'll call it date RNG so what range date range okay <clears throat> so the first thing let's just say the what RNG so this is the correct sheet that it's on and this is the actual range or name you could say A2 through A1287 uh, but I just use a shortcut by naming it. Okay, so um, so that's the first range, comma. Now the first criteria based on this range. So it needs to be. Um, we're not going to do greater than or equal to. We're just going to say it needs to be equal to. It needs to be whatever is me dot cm. Oops, me dot cmb. What? Okay. Everybody see that? Um, whatever's in the what category, that's what it needs to analyze. Then the next, so there's a comma. So now we do the next range that we want to use. I'm going to do some copying and pasting. Uh, the, the sheet is called count ifs with date, so I don't want to retype all that. Copy and paste. The range is not called energy list, it is called date RNG. Now, comma, so what's the criteria? The first criteria is that it is greater than or equal to whatever the starting date is. Agreed? So <clears throat> we want it to be either on the day or later than the start date, and then on the day of the end date or less than uh, the end date. So it needs to be, both criteria need to be included. So greater than or equal to the start date and less than or equal to the ending date. And you'll get more used to doing that. So me dot tb in uh, start date is greater than or equal to the starting date. And then the next criteria, range and criteria. I'll just copy the range and criteria because we're still dealing with the date. So copy this. Control C. Uh, now we'll put our little comma here and we'll hit Control V to paste again. So now we have the greater than or equal to a start date and we have the same range, comma, and it needs to be less than or equal to the end date, TB end date. And if I click away, it auto capitalizes so we know that is accurate. Uh, now, is there a problem? Maybe. Why would there be a problem, Daniel? Well, I'll tell you, because this 
is a text box. It is not a date box. There's no such thing as a date box. A text box always converts everything or thinks that everything is a string of text surrounded by little quotes invisibly. And sometimes the functions don't like that. So if they don't like it, then you know what we're going to do. We're going to do a C date. That's C D A T E. Open parentheses, close parentheses right here. But let's see if it just intuitively figures out what it needs to do. So. <clears throat> Alright, now it's a little bit long, you have to scroll quite a bit, so you could, in between the commas, you could make a new line using, uh, I'll show you, using this, space, hit the underscore, and hit enter. That will continue on your formula. In fact, let's go ahead and do that, it's good practice. So, space here, right, see, underscore, hit enter. And now we can actually manage and see all the code right here on one screen. So, remember space underscore enter. If you're in the middle of a code, you need to make sure that you put the uh, an ampersand space and the underscore. So anyway, here's our, our stuff. I'm going to put a space here just so we kind of visually see that this isn't three lines. This is a continuation of one line. Maybe another space will do it. Okay, a visual cue for me anyway. Let's put a stop marker here and just see how we do. I'm going to hit the save button. Okay, now let's see. Apples. So nothing triggered because I think we triggered it off of this one. So let's type in the number one. Why did I say one with a WH sound? Who knows? Okay, so let's see. Blah, 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 whatever. Hit F8. Uh, zero is the answer. Let's see if it's going to keep on being zero. Oh, gosh, what am I thinking? That's This needs to be a date. Okay, let's let's put a starting date of uh, 1 1 2013 cuz these all these dates are between uh, it, between the starting and the end of the year. So let's do this. Okay. And let's hit uh, F5. Let's trigger it. Let me hit backspace. Okay. So it's not working. Oh wait, apples. Okay, what about oranges? Oh, this is terribly wrong. Okay, so probably what I commented just a moment ago about the um, the dates. Let's go here. Let's put a stop marker. I'm going to go apples because there should be so many entries uh, in the, during this year. So let's hit backspace and hit a 5 because we know now if I hit a 3 now we have an actual date range, okay? So I know that if I hit F8, it's going to say, what the heck? 199. Well, that's interesting. 199 items. Why didn't it do that a moment ago? Okay, what about between four, uh, 3 1 2013? Oh, well, now it's decided to work. That's fantastic. And uh, how about uh, how about between three one and three? Is there thirty one days? Three thirty. Let's try that. Backspace and two thousand thirteen. Okay. So oh, so well, it, now it's working. Go figure. All right, so uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and make that change event trigger on all of them. In fact, let's be even more interest. Let's be more unique about this. Let's just make a new procedure and call it sub get the count. So we make a little procedure within our user form. Copy the actually cut and paste this to our function call our our thing called get the count and we'll just say uh, initialize this every time so whenever the start date is changed whenever the whoop, let me put this up here whenever this combo box is changed just run that procedure whenever this is changed run that procedure and voila now they all point to this accurate no typos daily so now that we change any of the three we change apples. So we see there was uh, 199 items here with, with apples on them. 
If we change that to oranges, there's 178. I'm going to hit the down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. Now, what if we wanted to, once again, 3, 1 through 3. There is no 331, but there is a 3, or is there a 331? Okay. So, but what, what if we wanted just 330? Oops. 330. 20 items. So that tells me that nothing happened on 331. Uh, so yeah, that's how you do it between two dates. 430? Oh, what about, okay, initially we said we wanted to know February throughout the end of March. So, 3.31. Okay, there's uh, 36 cake items between that. And juice, there's 24. Let's see what the most popular between this day range. Looks like uh, oranges had 36, cake is tied 34. Okay, so oranges and cake tied for 34. Uh, line entries. So that's how you do that. Pretty cool. You can also have little well I'm not going to get into that but you can also um, have different like shortcut buttons so if you wanted to do January you could click on the January button and it would put January 1st uh, through January 31st here and, uh, and it would run the get the count procedure or whatever. So there's all kinds of ways to skin that cat pretty cool pretty cool guys that's how you do that that's how you use dates with the count if you can do more than that you could have all these different columns and you wanted to have exactly you want to know exactly how many items had this 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 and this criteria at the same time bam there it is okay it's just a miniature uh, example of that now I'm gonna trim this up whoops I'm gonna trim this up because how many items have greater than or equal to that's not right so how many items and between these dates. Yeah. And I'm going to rename this frame. It says count if with date with numbers and I want that to say count if with dates. All right. We're in business. Thanks for watching and God bless. Oh, be sure and pick up a co your copy of this updated workbook in my Dropbox link on the video description. Just go to count count a count if count if in vba.xlsm. You should see it in there, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. God bless.